So, our present topic is on physics of welding. Uh, last class, uh, I was discussing about welding arc power and how to optimize the arc power, how to optimize the uh, arc length uh, that I have discussed in detail in last class. And at the end, I solved a problem. Today, the following topics will be covered. Here also, I discussed initially about the arc power and uh, how to optimize that means arc power. Here also I will discuss about the arc power and I will solve another problem on arc power uh, first of all. After that I will uh, show you how to initiate the arc, then uh, type of uh, different welding arc, what are the different types of arc and at the end of to this lecture I will discuss about arc stability and arc blow. So, first of all I will solve a problem one arc power actually how to find out the optimum arc length as well as op optimum power of uh, welding power source. Last class we solved a problem on that. Today we will solve similar types of problem, but little bit different. Today also we will solve, uh, I will solve a problem on welding power uh, and optimum arc length, uh, but the problem statement is little bit different than uh, previous problem. Here the problem statement is look like that is problem 2. The voltage length arc length characteristics of a DC is given by V is equal to this thing, where L is arc length which is in millimeter, which varied between 4 to 6 mm. Now, for this uh, following arc length, the current varying from 500 to 400 ampere. That means, for 4, 4 millimeter uh, arc length, here the current is uh, 500 ampere and for 6 millimeter arc length the current is 400 ampere. Here the power source is characteristics is approximated by straight line, here this is also given. So, here power source characteristics also uh, actually this power source is approximated here by a straight line, but we can solve the problem uh, of curve types of approximation also, but there will be the solution will be little bit difficult. That is why here for our approximation easy to solve, here we are approximated that the power source characteristics is a straight line in nature, but we can consider actual curve shape of power source characteristics also. There generally what happens, there the problem that means solution will be little bit difficult. Then here what are the things you have to find out? Here we have to find out the open circuit voltage and short circuit current. That means from this problem we can say that okay for a power source let us uh, what should be the open circuit voltage and open circuit uh, short circuit current that also we can find out if we know the detailed procedure of this thing. For that means as per our requirement we can give some sort of uh, this thing that means these are the requirement for our case that means we want for 4 millimeter uh, arc length we want 500 ampere current and for 6 mm arc length we want let us 400 ampere current. For these types of statement if we provide then what should be the actual power source or what should be the design of the power source that means what should be the short circuit current, what should be the open circuit voltage of the power source that we can calculate by this procedure or whatever the procedure we learn therefore by this procedure we can calculate that things. So, if we give this thing to this supplier they can provide the thing as per our requirement also. So, what happens? So, here what are the things we have to find out? Here we have to find out the open circuit voltage and short circuit current. Also, we have to find out what should be the optimum arc length and what should be the optimum power. These are the things we have to find out. I will solve this problem in detail then it will be very clear to you. So, first of all what are the given parameter here? What are the different parameter is given that say here the given data is what are the thing given here? Here generally voltage arc length characteristics which is represented as 15 plus 4 L. Here L is in millimeter it is given let this is equation number 1 I am representing. Then another thing what are other things is given? At 4 mm L arc length at L is equal to 4 mm, L is equal to 4 mm here I current I is equal to 500 ampere it is given and L at L is equal to 5 mm what are the th other thing is given I is equal to 400 ampere. And other things also in this problem statement is given which is generally this power source characteristics is approximated as 
a straight line is natural. Generally, power source characteristics we know, it generally represent voltage versus current region. So, here this is approximated as a straight line. How the just I am drawing a straight line here? This is the straight line. This is called short circuit current that is let us I am represent this is short circuit current which I have to find out and let this is this is generally called open circuit voltage. Let us I am representing open circuit voltage. So, let for a particular voltage be the working point is I am representing in terms of W. So, for a particular voltage V here let us the working point W the corresponding welding current is we can easily calculate that that procedure I, I already have discussed in details. So, what happens for a particular so here generally working point have a I am representing in by the following the point that different point of this characteristic I am representing in the following way that means let this is A, this is B, this is point, this point is C, this is point is D and this point is E. So, these are the different point which I am representing here. Now, from here from the similarity of triangle here we can see that A B C and A D E these two triangle are similar to each other. So, from the similarity of triangle A B C, so from the similarity of triangle A B C and triangle a D E what we can write? We can write A e by A D is equal to what we can write? B C by D that you know actually that you also know well actually from the similarity of triangle we can say that height of one triangle the ratio of height of one, one to another triangle and ratio of base to base of one triangle to another triangle that generally equal to each other from the simulator that we know. Now, from here what, what is AB? AB means open circuit voltage minus the working voltage and what is AD? AD generally we can represent open circuit voltage. Then what is BC? BC generally here is working current or welding current and uh, I comma V actually this W point is represented. So, then I uh, so this is I divided by that means working current divided by short circuit current. Let this is equation number 2. So, here what should be our output? Here output actually uh, we have to calculate what is open circuit voltage what is short circuit current, what is L optimum that means optimum length of optimum arc length and what is optimum power corresponding. These are the four, four things we have to find out. So, first of all we have to find out open circuit voltage and short circuit current. So, here in this equation 2 now what we can write? So, from equation 1 now from equation 1 first of all we will calculate the different voltage value from equation 1 what we can calculate at L is equal to L is equal to 4 from equation 1 for L is equal to 4 millimeter what is V? V we are getting as 15 plus 4 into L means L means of 15 plus 4 into 4 that is 31 we are getting. Similarly, for from equation 1 for L is equal to 6 mm what we are getting? V is equal to we are getting 15 plus 4 into 6 that means 39, 39 volt. Okay. Now, this we will put this this voltage value we will put in equation number 2. So, these two so this voltage this this 31 that means voltage 31 39 will put in equation. So, by equation 2 what we get? We get 
V O S minus 31 divided by V O S is equal to what we get? I means for corresponding to this 31, what, what is the current value? Here corresponding thing to this 31 voltage, we got that current value is 500 ampere. That means and corresponding to this 39 voltage, current value is generally 400 ampere. That is given actually, this 2 is given. So, generally here what we can write is 500 divided by I s. Let this is equation number 3. And another equation, what we by equation number 2, what another, what we uh, other things we got? So, V O S divide minus 39, if the voltage is 39, that open circuit voltage, V open circuit voltage minus 39 by V open circuit voltage by, from by equation 2 actually what we are getting. So, 400 divided by I S short circuit, let this is equation 4. So, uh, now uh, by dividing the equation 3 by 4, so what we can write? Equation number 3 divided by equation number 4, by this what we can get? We can get V O S minus 31 divided by V O S minus 39 is equal to 500 divided by 400. So, from here we can easily calculate the open circuit voltage. So, just I am cross, I am doing the cross multiplication. So, 5 V O S minus 39 into 5 is equal to your 4 into V open circuit voltage minus 39, 31 into 4. So, from here what is the open circuit voltage we are getting? So, open circuit voltage that means this 5 O S minus 4 O S will give you the open circuit voltage which is generally 39 into 5 minus 31 into 4. This will give you a value which is equal to 71. So, we got a solution that is the here the open circuit voltage is, so we got one solution that open circuit voltage is 31, 71 volt. So, we already got this uh, open circuit voltage, uh, by putting this open circuit voltage in equation 3, so now putting this V open circuit is equal to 71 in equation equation 3 or equation 4, we get, so V open circuit voltage minus 31 divided by V open circuit, V open circuit divided by 500 divided by I guess. From here generally we can calculate the short circuit current, open circuit voltage is 71 minus 31 divided by 71 is equal to 500 divided by I guess. So, here we get I s is equal to, so directly I am just putting this I s value, I s is equal to 887.5, 887.5 ampere. So, we got this open circuit voltage as well as short circuit current, this is actually ampere, open circuit voltage and short circuit current we got. Now, we have to find out the optimum arc length and optimum power. So, now what we got? We got the power source characteristic open circuit voltage and short circuit current we got. So, here generally this is short circuit current is 887.5, here generally this open circuit voltage is generally 71, this we already got. Now, for optimum arc length and optimum power, we have to find out for optimum arc length and optimum power, what we have to find out? We have to find out the current because we know voltage is equal is a function of L. Voltage is a function of generally 15 plus 4 L, this is given, this equation is given in equation number 1 which I have already uh, shown in previous slide. 
and another equation also we got that equation generally so here what we have to find out we have to find out both current and that means welding current and welding voltage in terms of L. So, what we know? We know another equation number 2 is open circuit voltage minus this is general equation 2. So, by this equation 1 and 2 what we can find out? We can find out this current in terms of L as well as voltage in terms of voltage already is given in equation which is a function of arc length. Now, we have to find out the current also is a function of arc length then only we will be able to find out optimum arc length and optimum power. In this equation, in equation 2 what we can get? Voltage current relationship in terms of so that is from equation 2 actually voltage current relationship. So, here from here what we get? V we can represent as 71 minus by some calculation 71 divided by 887.5 into I. Okay. I think this is correct. So, this 71 minus this. So, this is another equation let us this is equation number 5. Now, this equation 1 and 5 from by equating that means by equating equation 1 and 5 we will get the current is a function of L. Then only we can get power is a function of L. So, here the equating equation 1 is equal to equation number 5 by this equation number 1 equal to equation number 5 by this what we get? We will get current is a function of L. 87.5 i from here i we get as the 71 71 minus 15 minus 4 l into 887.5 divided by 71 correct this is equal to actually your 56 minus 4 l into 887.5 divided by 71 we got. From given data we got that voltage is a function of well and from this two equation that is equation number 1 and 5 we get welding current is also a function of L. Now, we will go for finding out the what is the power. So, here power is equal to V into I that means they have the power is also a function of L because we are interested to find out the optimum arc length. So, for optimum arc length generally power should be a function of only L. That is why we are doing voltage is a function of L which is already given. Then we are finding out the current also is a function of L. Generally that we are finding out there is a 56 minus 4 L into 887.5 divided by 71. Now, for optimum arc length L optimum what we have to do? We have to do del P by differentiation del P by del F del L and it is make equal to 0. If we just do it then we will get optimum arc length. So, here we have to uh, differentiate equation let this is equation number 6. So, we are differentiating equation number 6 with respect to L and make it equal to 0 we will get the optimum arc length. So, here generally 4 into 56 minus 4 L minus 4 into 15 plus 4 L that will be equal to 0. So, this will give a value of that means here is 8 L equal to 56 minus 41. So, here L we will get as 41 divided by 8. So, here optimum arc length is 5.125 millimeter because in our problem itself it is given L is in millimeter that is why everywhere we are considering L. So, this is actually this is our so here optimum arc length equal to how much 5.125 millimeter. Now, what will be the optimum power? So, we got this 2 and the third solution is L optimum 
optimum is equal to your 5.1 to 5 mm. Now, putting this value of optimum arc length in equation number 6, so putting L optimum in equation equation 6, we will we will get optimum power. Let us, so what will be the optimum power? Optimum power will be our 15 plus 4 L into 56 minus 4 L into 887.5 divided by 71. So, if we put the value of L in this equation that is 5.125, we will get optimum power as 5.753 into 10 to the power 3, this unit will be in watt. So, this is equal to we can write this we can tell that the optimum power of this arc is 7 point kilowatt also we can write. So, we got this force. So, so what happens once we know the detailed step about uh, how to find out the optimum arc length, how to find out the optimum arc power, then what happens as per our requirement, we can also design some welding machine as per our requirement. So, from this problem, we learn how to find out the open circuit voltage, how to find out the um, short circuit current, how to find out the optimum arc length. So, these types of problem. Uh, if it will come actually, so we can easily solve if we know the procedure, this basic procedure in detail. So, here basic procedure is a straightforward, then generally here we have to find out the power in terms of uh, length, that means first of all what is the procedure, here procedure is first of all voltage which is a function of L that will be generally given in uh, our problem statement. Then we have to find out the current uh, which, which should be a function of L that means we should uh, find out the current in terms of uh, L. So, if voltage and current is a function of L then we can easily find out the power as a function of L because power is equal to voltage into current. So, if we get the power as a function of L, if we just derivative this power with respect to L, then we can easily find out the optimum arc length from there. So, if you know the optimum arc length, based on this optimum arc length, we can easily find out what will be the optimum welding voltage, what will be the optimum welding current. So, if we get this optimum welding voltage and optimum welding current, then we can easily get the optimum arc power. So, by this generally we can easily calculate all the element required for arc power. Now, we will go another topic how the arc is initiated. So, we got arc power now how this we, we got idea about uh, welding arc in, uh, more or less in details. Now, we will say we should know how this arc is initiated. Generally arc is initiated by providing a conducting path between electrode and workpiece. So, what happens for initiation of the arc let this is our workpiece and this is electrode. So, first of all we have to make a conducting path actually. By providing a conducting path, this, this is our workpiece and this is our electrode. So, here what we have to do? We have to generally make a conducting path between these two, that means workpiece and workpiece and electrode. We have to generally providing a conducting path between these two, then we can get a electric arc. Or this can be done by ionizing the gap between these two. The other way we can say that uh, we have to ionize this gap, if we can ionize this gap then we can generate the welding arc. Then how this welding arc is generated? There is different techniques are there for different types of welding techniques. What are the different techniques? One technique can be tapping method, here I am showing around uh, 5 different techniques are there which generally used in welding industry that I am showing. This can be tapping method, this can be a scratching method. This can be by steel wool, this can be that means arc can be started by a carbon rod, it also can be started by a high frequency unit. These are the different techniques generally which is used to arc initiate. Now, one by one I will discuss in detail, generally tapping method, this is generally tapping method. In this method generally this electrode, let this is your electrode, you see this is generally starting point, this is generally finish point I have shown here. A starting point mainly means here generally tap the rod against the base material. This electrode have to tap with this rod, uh, with this workpiece, and what happens? 
by momentarily touching the electrode with the job by tapping method and generally it tapping it away that means in second position it is tapping it away from its initial position. Then a arc is started here a arc will start this this types of arc will start here ok. It means here we will get a arc. So, this is called tapping method that means tap the rod against the base material then by momentarily here what we do? Here momentarily we have to touch this electrode with this base material or work piece material and after that we have to take it away. So, once we take it away in this final for finish position we will get a electric arc here. This is called general tapping method. A scratch method or this is called a scratching method by this scratching method generally how the scratching method is done. Here they scratch the electrode, this is electrode, this electrode scratch this is this electrode is scratch on the base plate like a mass. So, then what we get? We can get a arc here. So, after scratching at the finish position, we will get a arc. So, this is, is the technique which generally used in uh, manual metal arc welding process. That means, these two techniques generally used in manual metal arc welding technique SMAW that is shielded, uh, shielded manual metal arc welding process generally it is used. Then other technique like by steel wool in this technique what is done? Here a steel wool kept in between this electrode and work piece. Here you see this is the steel wool which generally kept in between this electrode and work piece. Then current is switched on that means welding current is switched on. Once welding current is switched on then this steel wool provides a conducting path for the arc to establish. This, is stab this steel wool generally once the current is switched on then this is steel wool means it is a chip of steel. From machining you see some sort of chip is come out this is steel wool is a small chip of steel. So, this is a conducting material. So, once it keep uh, in between this now then once we switch on the current then uh, what happens it is provide the conducting path. So, here arc uh, for I provide the, it provide the conducting path for arc to establish. This technique is widely used in submerged arc welding techniques as well as in MIG welding technique also. Then MIG means GMAW gas metal arc welding on metal inert gas welding technique generally this steel wool techniques is used. Then another category is by generally a carbon rod also we can generate the arc. In this technique generally a suitable arc gap is maintained in between electrode and work piece this is the gap. Then the electrode and the job simultaneously momentarily task with a carbon rod. So, first of all a gap is maintained then the current is 1. So, once the welding current is 1 after that what we have to do then the electrode as well as this work piece are momentarily tasked with this carbon rod. So, once we task this electrode once we task this electrode and work piece by this carbon rod then this carbon rod provide a conducting path. Due to this conducting path generally a arc is established in between this gap. So, in this way generally the arc can be initiated this is generally we observe this types of uh, arc initiation is done in case of automatic types of uh, metal arc welding techniques then in some, some, some cases some TIG welding techniques also we can see these types of arc initiation techniques. Another category which is a very, very sophisticated technique for arc initiation. Here a high frequency unit is used to generate the arc. Uh, generally why this high frequency unit is good and which is advantageous than other technique? Because generally uh, in this techniques we can eliminate the electrode contamination with base material. That means what happens there is a chance of electrode contamination in case of uh, T welding or plasma arc welding techniques. Generally there is a chance of electrode contamination once the arc is initiated by other method like tapping method or scassing method then that time what happens due to this short circuiting of the electrode with arc piece there is a chance of contamination of this uh, electrode with base material. That means there is a chances of melting of this electrode and it deposited with uh, welding material. So, so that, that will create a defect actually. To eliminate this thing a high frequency unit generally used to uh, initiate the arc. Generally this high frequency unit is inserted in the circuit to initiate the this unit generally inserted in the circuit to initiate the arc. Uh, this high frequency unit is inserted with the circuit to initiate the arc. It generally this high frequency unit is a device which supply very high voltage and low current. 
here generally it supplies very high voltage within a range of some kilo volt or very low current it, it can supply, but these things is with uh, this high voltage with uh, very high frequency also, this high voltage with very high frequency this unit supply. So, what is the output of this uh, unit? This high frequency unit device, it supplies very high voltage within a range of some kilo volt uh, with high frequency and with low current, very low current. So, how it is initiated? First of all, a gap is maintained in between this workpiece and electrode there is maintained a gap. This gap is generally within a range of 2 to 3 millimeter. Then what happens? A, a spark jump across the air gap between the electrode and the job. Then this high voltage, then the whatever the high voltage of this unit, this high voltage generally ionize the medium between electrode and workpiece, which generally start initially a pilot arc. Then this pilot arc ultimately leads to a start of main arc. So, first by jumping of this spark, it is ionized the medium between electrode and workpiece that gap due to this ionization a pilot arc is initially generated. That pilot arc generally cannot do the welding, that pilot arc cannot do the welding. So, it leads to generate the main arc. So, first this a pilot arc is generated by this high frequency unit, then it leads to generate the welding arc which generally do the welding operation. These types of technique generally used non consumable types of electrode like tungsten, there generally we use these types of uh, high frequency unit like in ga gas tungsten arc welding, in plasma arc welding techniques where generally there is used a non consumable types of electrode that is tungsten electrode generally used. So, to eliminate the contamination generally this is used over there. Here one thing we should keep it in mind, though high voltage generally we know that high voltage generally may be fatal for a welder, but here as we are using high frequency that is why it is not that much of dangerous than uh, only uh, high voltage unit. So, due to this high frequency unit generally this current cannot pass uh, into the body of the welder. So, here what happens? There can be some skin effect if there is a contact between this unit with this welder open contact with this welder and the unit, then what happens? There is a chance of uh, some skin effects because here due to this high frequency generally this current cannot pass into the body, it generally can pass in the surface of the skin of our body. So, it can, there can be some skin effect. Then also we should careful to uh, once we go for using this types of arc initiation technique. So, we got idea about that uh, different techniques of arc initiation. Now, we should know what are the different types of arc. Okay, we should know the different categories of arc. Uh, we can categorize the arc in four different categories. Uh, these four different categories of arc are, this arc can be a steady arc, that can be unsteady arc, this can be continuously non-steady arc and this can be pulse arc. Generally a steady arc we observed in case of DC current where generally direct current power supply is used, there we get a steady arc. Unsteady arc generally this is a arc which we observe once there is a metal transfer worker which is short circuit in nature. This metal transfer related thing I will discuss in details in subsequent topics of this uh, physics of welding itself. So, there I will show you what is short circuiting types of metal transfer. In case of short circuiting metal transfer generally there we observe unsteady types of arc that means here the arc is irregular in nature which is unsteady which that means uh, it is bearing with time unsteadily. That is why this is called unsteady arc, the second category. This is we observe generally in case of short circuiting types of metal transfer. Short circuiting types of metal transfer means there is a continuously there is a variation of arc gap between electrode and workpiece and there is also occur some short circuiting. So, there is different uh, steps in between arc gap as it is taken place that is why this arc characteristics is unsteady in nature. This third category is called continuously non-steady arc, continuously non-steady arc this is observed in case of generally alternating current. That means, AC power supply generally this uh, continuously non-steady arc we observe because uh, in case of uh, alternating uh, current flow there is a sinusoidal variation of current is there. So, due to this sinusoidal variation of current is a continuous variation of current is there. So, that is why uh, continuous variation with which is varying with time that means, somewhere we are getting peak, somewhere 0, somewhere negative, somewhere positive. So, there is a continuous variation of arc is also observed in case of AC 
power supply. And uh, this fourth category is called uh, pulse arc. This pulse arc generally uh, observed in case of pulse characteristic power source. Pulse characteristic power source I have already discussed in details. They are generally a background color. This is this pulse characteristics means they are generally what we observe. Here generally current generally varying with time which is pulse in nature. So, due, due to this variation though the, these pulse types of characteristic is, is a DC types of power, direct current type of power source characteristics. Here generally here there is a peak current as well as background current. This is generally called background current, this is generally called peak current. So, generally here the current is varying with time and here there is a peak pulse as well as a background pulse. So, here due to this variation of current with time there we observe a arc that arc is called this arc also is varying with different pulse of current. So, that's, that types of arc is called pulse arc. So, these are the generally four different types of uh, arc we observe in case of welding techniques. Now, we will see what are the different mode of that means another, another categories of uh, welding arc also observe. These categories is based on shape of the electrode tip. Generally, these categories is uh, based on the shape of the electrode tip. Here generally two different mode of arc we observe in case of uh, tungsten electrode. So, here depending upon the geometry of the tungsten electrode, here we observe two different types of mode of arc. What is this two different types of mode of arc? These two different types of mode of one mode of arc is called cathode spot mode arc, another mode of arc is called normal mode arc. Cathode spot uh, mode arc, here the, the cathode spot mode exhibits a constriction of the plasma at the cathode and is accompanied by a high voltage for a given arc length. Though the normal mode is more stable and readily stable, but for the same arc gap we get higher temperature that for same arc gap for same current we get higher temperature rise in case of cathode spot mode than the anode spot mode. Because generally for same arc gap due to this uh, constriction of the arc there we get higher voltage. Due to this higher voltage for same current and same gap itself we get generally higher temperature in case of cathode spot mode. Here in case of cathode spot mode the plasma is constrict, the electrode tip beca become sharp due to this sharp and tapering shape of this electrode tip here uh, due to this uh, magnetic effect that means current flow and due to this current flow of and its magnetic effect here the in cathode region generally cathode space region here the generally arc plasma constriction occur arc plasma constriction as well in near the cathode region. Due to this constriction arc is become like this, this is generally cathode spot mode. So, what happens here cathode spot mode provide higher voltage for same current and same uh, gap itself, it provide higher voltage and it provides higher temperature than the normal mode for same current and same arc gap this arc temperature we got that means now, now we got the idea in case of cathode spot mode we get higher temperature, in case of uh, no, normal mode generally we get lower temperature. Then how we can measure this temperature in arc that also we should know. Generally the temperature of arc we can measure uh, by two different technique, one is called electrostatic technique, another one is called spectroscopic technique. So, one is called electrostatic technique and another one is called spectroscopic technique. So, electrostatic techniques in this technique there is used a probe that is why these techniques also sometimes called electrostatic probe technique. In designing the probe the most important consideration is that the measurement should not affect the arc properties. So, whatever the probe we are using to measure the arc temperature that means let this is let this is the arc. So, in this arc what happens we are generally measuring the temperature by using a probe, probe this is let us say probe. Now, here generally this probe should not disturb this arc, it should not disturb this probe should not disturb the arc, always keep this thing is mind. For that generally consider some design criteria, here one thing this probe should be sufficiently rigid, then another things this probe uh, should have generally very a smaller diameter 
so that it should not disturb the arc. For that here we used molybdenum as probe material. This diameter of this probe generally used as 0.15 millimeter which is given here. It has a length is around 100 mm, but only 10 to 15 millimeter of this length pass through the arc. Only this though it has a length is around 100 mm, but only 10 to 15 millimeter it passes through the arc. Now here one thing we should keep it in mind, the probe has to move fast enough to prevent the wire becoming so hot that it cannot emit electron or vaporize. That means, this probe we should pass through this arc in such a way, so that this probe should not vaporize or probe should not emit the electron inside the arc. And, and another thing we should keep it in mind, this movement should not so fast, so that it is physically disturb the arc column, that also we should keep it in mind. So, there should be a optimum movement of probe inside the arc. So, so that it should not disturb the arc as well as it should not vaporize or it should not emit the electron, that we should keep it in mind. That techniques are then from this probe generally by some data acquisition system, we can measure the temperature. Here one thing we should keep it in mind, yeah, that the, this temperature of this arc is within a range of around, I have to already told you within a range of 20,000 Kelvin. Then, but a probe of molybdenum whose temperature, uh, whose melting point is uh, within a range of around 2600 degrees centigrade and it is the vaporized temperature within a range of uh, 4500 degrees within that range actually. So, what happens then how this probe is uh, measuring the temperature of uh, uh, arc, that also uh, little bit uh, um, we should know. That is why what we have told you this probe we should pass through the arc so fast so that it should not emit the electron, it should not vaporize, this is one thing. So, uh, by touching the arc by this probe, whatever the sense it is taking, that sense itself it can record the temperature range, to record the temperature range by using data acquisition system. Another technique generally which is used that is called a spectroscopic technique. In this, this is generally it is a sophisticated techniques, here generally alignment of optical uh, lens is very, very important here. So, generally this spectroscopic techniques require a accurate al optical alignment, generally whatever the lens and other system is used to measure the temperature here, that is required accurate optical alignment, always this is a very sophisticated technique. By this optical uh, system, we can also measure the temperature of arc. So, next class I will start arc stability and arc blow. Uh, there we will uh, discuss in details uh, what is arc stability, what is arc blow, what are the different uh, effect of this arc stability, what are the effect of arc blow in details in next class.